consumption taking place, at least on social media. There was a time when we passively consumed information, but now we interact with a diversity of voices from around the world sharing stories of dreams, challenges, and struggles. I find this very inspiring. Recently, I was inspired by one of my contacts, Ahmed Imam, who shared his story. Ahmed couldn't get recruiters to look at his resume until he changed his name. This really resonated with me because I'm often told that I don't look like your average Muslim or Arab. So when someone hears my name, Muhammad, their first reaction is, you must be a convert. So after a few uncomfortable seconds, they reluctantly accept that I am Muslim and I am an Arab. And we move beyond to the subject at hand. Now, I know people don't always have bad intentions, but I'm amazed at how many are still driven by stereotypes and misconceptions. I touched upon this topic earlier this year when I spoke at TEDx. I wanted to highlight the identity struggle that most Muslims face. If they look too Western, they're ostracized by their own community, and if they look too Muslim, well, they're associated with a group of terrorists who have hijacked Islam for their own twisted interpretation. These are vital conversations to share even on LinkedIn. I don't just want to share a resume. I want people in my network to connect with the human behind the list of accomplishments. You see, authentic connections in life can help us achieve clarity and redefine our understanding of inclusive and diversive communities. And at a time when houses of worship are being attacked, we have a social responsibility to speak up. Besides that, there is a healing and a strength in sharing a story. We can become a reflection for others so they can better understand themselves. We can also become empowered to reclaim our own narrative. To better understand this, Think of inclusion as a circle where the center is the safest point. When your social mores resemble those of the dominant culture, you move closer to the center and you have a greater sense of belonging. But if you retain your ethnicity in your name, whether it sounds Muslim or Jewish, Latin or Chinese, you move further away from the center and the less you belong. Those who don't share anything significant with the dominant culture remain outside of the circle of safety altogether. By using these platforms to speak up and to listen to empathy, we can evolve into true leaders, emotionally intelligent and socially responsible. Leaders who role model and not role play. Listening to the personal narrative of others helps us widen the circle of safety. We start to see ourselves in their reflection and to gain new perspectives from those who we perceive on the outside. In this way, we learn to redefine our understanding of inclusion and together we strive to make our community safer and more accepting. So to all of you courageous souls out there in the virtual world sharing your stories of struggle and triumph, keep it up. Don't be silenced. We are changing the world one post at a time. One day we will all be part of the circle. Mm -hmm.